My name is Taya Obrecht, and I'm here today talking about my new novel, Inland. I grew up watching a lot of classic westerns because my grandparents loved them. I think one of the things that I really found myself drawn toward cracking open was this myth of the, the woman waiting at home. The cowboys will just walk in, and they'll just be like an angry pot stirrer in the background. And if we get any sense of her, she's a broken person, and uh, everyone she knows has died. I wanted to explore the, the rage that must be brewing inside the pot stirrer in the corner. You cannot speak of life in Amargo without mentioning solitude or snakes. Inland is set in at the turn of the 19th century and follows a frontiers woman uh, in the Arizona Territory and a young outlaw named Larry. I knew from the get-go that one of the narratives was going to span only a single day in Nora's life and the other would span decades in Lurie's. And the challenge of the book was how these disparate threads were going to be woven together. She's waiting for her husband, who's a newspaper man in town, to come back with water to revive the, the household, which has been parched for several days. Life's happiness is always a famine. And what little we find interests nobody. Larry's on the run. He's been on the run his whole life. He finds himself on a journey with the American military in Texas in 1857. The Camel Corps, which was an experiment to bring camels over from the Middle East to serve as pack animals in the American Southwest. What in hell were these jangling monstrosities? These big, toothy, snooted goats. The minute I put pen to paper, an animal shows up immediately, like it's been invited in, you know. Burke the camel for Lurie represents everything. You know, he's home, he's this thing that Lurie clings to when any kind of shift happens in his life. And I think the magic of animals is that they carry on living despite all this weight from, from the human world. Nameless and unburied, turned out suddenly into the bewildering dark, they rose to find themselves entirely alone. The landscape of the West has always struck me as something that has to absolutely be haunted. If the turbulence of the West applied to its living people, it must apply to the dead too. I knew from the beginning that Lurie would see the dead, um, and he does from a very, very early age. They burden him with their wants. He doesn't really know how to deal with that. Nora speaks to the imagined ghost of her dead daughter all the time, and I'm very, very interested in who people are when no one's watching. Bloodlust or mercy, the result would be the same. This is a story about survival sure. The stories that we tell ourselves about who we are, even when we're wrong, about the way we revere and fear the dead, about how we justify even the worst things we end up doing as people in the context of home and family. <laughs>